Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the Neal's Homestead. We've reached the time of year when everything seems to have to happen at the same time. I'm trying to get some work done in here with these little seedlings. Old guys out there are trying to till up the ground in the two of the high tunnels and because in about a week we're supposed to get 3,600 onion plants and we're going to plant those all by hand in those two buildings. So uh, it's a very busy time and sometimes it feels a little bit stressful. This is the second video in like a little series that I'm doing about planting seeds to grow for your garden and then transplanting the seedlings and this is the transplanting the seedlings part and we are actually out in a, the kitchen uh, that we have that's what used to be a certified kitchen but it kind of just has been neglected over the past year and a half almost um, so we turned it into a place to grow the seedlings for our summer garden up underneath there we can see the little plants growing up. In case you didn't watch the video that leads up to this video, I'm in a kitchen that we own. It's a was was a certified kitchen. It's a 12 by 24 a building that uh, actually old guy and I lived in uh, for 11 months while our house that burned was rebuilt. So then after that we just decided to turn it into a certified kitchen to sell baked goods and kitchen items uh, at our market. We have a big greenhouse but we aren't using it anymore. We don't want to heat it and so I brought the stuff in here. I went to the greenhouse and I brought some things. Uh, we use these 50 cell trays here. This is what they look like. They're all contained and there are row, five in each row with 10 rows and then we put them in a web tray like that. So I brought some BM1. What I used before for the germination is BM2, which always seems backwards to me because it seems like you should use the BM first, but you use the BM2 first. But anyway, I mixed some in a bowl here and filled a couple of these 50 cell trays with some soil. And then I got some more pepper seeds, Thai pepper seeds, and I guess I brought some Swiss chard here that I'm intending to go ahead and start today. Alright, so these are some plants that have grown up, not all of them have grown up big enough to transplant, but I'm going to work on some of them. And the first one I'm going to work on is this second row, and that's Chinese cabbage, which the Chinese cabbage, <laughs> actually, I'm hoping it's good because I am, I've i never seen it look like this before. I've used this variety, but I, don't, I hope I don't have some kind of weird mutated thing uh, going on with the seed that I bought. I like to use a chopstick to transplant little seedlings, and I'll show you how I do it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is try see how this goes I don't know how developed the roots are but I was going to try to lift out that whole row at one time but it's not happening so I'm going to take it out in sections I'm going to lay that down set this aside and then I'll separate the little seedlings from one from another I'll grab it by the stem or the top of the plant and just gently separate the seeds and lay them out separated on the surface of my tray. Just keep separate the whole thing. Now I don't really want all these I think. I'll have to see how many I have so I'm probably only going to pick out the best looking ones and plant those and throw the rest of them away. I think I got, yes, I got a new package of seeds. I just glanced over there, and that's a new package of seeds that I just got this year. But they look pretty different from what I've grown before. At this point, my soil in my tray is dry. It's not totally dry because if it's totally dry, it won't take up the moisture later, but you don't want it sopping wet right now. And what I do is pick up the little seedling like that with. This probably all doesn't need to be on there, but and with my chopstick, 
you, I lay the seedling on top of the fluffy soil. I put my chopstick down in there to make a little hole, swirl it around. And then with my chopstick, I poke the roots down. Down to where the leaves are sticking out and all the root and part of the stem is down. Let me do another one for you. You have to be gentle with some things like this. This is pretty fragile. So we need to be really careful. I did a video a couple years ago about transplanting leggy seedlings. I'll try to put a link in there in this video about that because a lot of people have looked at that. I've got over 140,000 views on it and everybody seems to think that it's really an eye opener on how to transplant leggy tomato seedlings plus how to avoid having leggy tomato seedlings. I, I guess I'll do 15. That's probably more than we need, but I have a Korean neighbor and if I have extra then she would probably like some because she likes to make kimchi. So I'm trying to pick out the 15 best. I'll be filling this tray up with the rest of what I want to plant and then I'll show you the next step. I just realized that I failed to tell you how to tell when to transplant your little seedlings into bigger cells and these first two leaves that come up are called cotyledon I think that's how you pronounce it it could be a little bit wrong but and then we have first true leaves that come out next and when those first true leaves come out that's when it's okay to go ahead and transplant your seedlings I'm of the opinion that the earlier the better on getting it done instead of let I mean if you wait and procrastinate for whatever reason and have to let them get bigger it's it's not a total disaster but I think you're better off the to do it as quickly as possible after those first true leaves come out so I think that's all I want to do out of this tray right now I have some different kinds of peppers right here and down inside here I have some eggplant and then I've got broccoli and cabbage here but they're on the edge of being ready but I'm gonna wait a couple days I just might add that this it, what I've done today with taking two trays out is part of why I like these what I call hot dog trays because I can just take one whole section out and not disrupt anything else next I want to show you how I water um, small stuff like this after they get big enough I'll water them from the top but I use some water soluble fertilizer now it's not organic we are not organic we've never been organic we've never pretended to be organic but uh, we use this water soluble fertilizer that's made by a company called Peters the analysis is 20 20 20 plus it has a lot of different trace minerals in it which is what I really like I, I've noticed a difference if I use uh, fertilizer with or without trace min minerals I can tell a difference so I'm going to mix it up on this first application I don't actually want it to be too strong I want it to be a little bit dilute but I need to give those little plants some food to grow on and then I just set it down in there and the water seeps in from the bottom if you water from the top even with a little hand sprinkler type thing it washes stuff around and, and I don't like it it's easier to just let it soak up from the bottom and when you f start seeing moisture come up to the top uh, that's when to, to stop you don't want to keep your plants waterlogged at all that is a disaster too because you're going to have some uh, you could cause damping off you could have cause other fungus problems you might attract fungus gnats after it's soaked up I'll just set it there to drain a little bit and then I'll slide it up underneath the light those lights are plenty far away from that um, I would really actually like them a little bit closer but I'm probably not gonna do it because we have them strung up with wire and I think they'll probably be okay. I'm going to keep an eye on them. In my setup right here, I have two heat mats, but we only turned the one on right here because I didn't have enough that needed that one. And what I want to tell you about that is that now that these are up, like this one, I've moved it down to where there's no heat. 
The lights put off some heat, but I'm just going to set it in there on that unheated heat pad, which is also where I have the things I did today. And I grew these marigolds from seed on that unheated one because they didn't need it quite so hot. My point in telling you that is that after your seeds have germinated, then you don't have to keep them so warm underneath. It's better to cool them off. And so I moved them onto an unheated area so that they won't have those that heat at their roots. The heat at the roots can make them be leggy. Just like if you go watch that uh, video about dealing with leggy tomato seedlings, I'll tell you that about that in there. And it's better if your plants, especially your tomatoes, grow cooler at the roots after they've germinated. So anyway, we're going hot and heavy already here. Uh, after a, a winter of kind of lazing around and doing stuff in the house, it's time to get back out in the outside. Well, I need some vitamin D anyway because I get kind of short over the winter time. And I know that makes a lot of difference for me. So I'll be out in the sun more. Uh, I'm trying to get my body, uh, my aching body all limbered up again because it seems like I spend a lot of time walking around because I forget things and I have to go back and get them. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.